We are now in hour two of Learn the Bible in 24 Hours, in which we're going to address the creation and the fall of man. And let me just say right at the outset, of all the sessions we're going to have, this one is undoubtedly the most frustrating. And it's not because of the biblical material, it's because of the presuppositions and prejudices we bring to this topic because we've all grown up in a pagan culture in which it, there's an enforced theory in science called evolution. And the myths and nonsense that gets promoted in our schools and throughout our culture are one of the things that we need to overcome. Our problem isn't the Bible. Our problem is bad science, poor science. But let's just jump in. Uh, we obviously are in the Old Testament, and we're, go- we're in the first book of the Old Testament, the first book of the Torah, the five books of Moses, book of Genesis. In our panorama of history, we're going right at the beginning, the creation of time itself, not just the physical universe, but the creation of time itself. And uh, in this session, we're going to take three chapters, chapters one and two, which deal with creation, and chapter three, which deals with the predicament of mankind, the fall of man, and uh, what God is doing to respond to that. And uh, so this is hour two of the 24 hours. There are actually only two world views. There are lots of different views, but they really categorize into one of two categories. Either everything is the result of a cosmic accident, and this is what we're taught in schools today, that we came from goo to you by way of the zoo, in other words. And uh, this idea of uh, uh, everything being the result of a cosmic accident uh, is ridiculous, of course, but also... We, it shouldn't surprise us then that our children have no sense of destiny. And how can they have if we are all just some kind of cosmic accident? The alternative view, worldview is that we are the result of a deliberate and highly skillful design, which implies, of course, that there's a designer. And in turn, that implies there's an accountability to that designer. All the different worldviews you might categorize fall into one of these two categories. And these things are important issues because it will lead to four basic questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? And why am I here? And where am I going to go when I die? These four basic questions are questions that every one of us has a belief about, an attitude about. And uh, it's critical, of course, because this will determine our destiny. It's interesting that the book of Genesis anticipates all false philosophies. Atheism is rebutted by the fact that we've been created by God. Pantheism, the fact that God is everywhere, is nonsense. God is transcendent of his creation and distinguishable from it. Polytheism is rebutted in the book of Genesis. There is one God. And uh, materialism is rebutted in Genesis because matter had a beginning and it also will have an end. Humanism, which is, of course, the official religion of the United States, as so declared by the Supreme Court, uh, suggests that God not, uh, is rebutted by the fact that God, not man, is the ultimate reality. We're not the ultimate reality. We're simply pawns in a prize in a cosmic warfare. But God himself is the ultimate reality. And, of course, the other thing that lurks behind all our discussions is this theory of evolution. And when we speak of evolution or evolutionism, we're not talking about the fact that there is adaptation within species. It's really uh, what we're dealing with here is biogenesis, but we generally call it the theory of evolution. And that is, of course, rebutted by the Scripture because God deliberately and skillfully created each one of us. And uh, uniformism. Among scientists, there's an attitude that things have always been the way they are, that things continue as they always have been. And the Bible speaks differently. It says God intervenes. Uh, not, if, you know, not only at the creation, but during history. He intervenes in what's going on. 
And it's interesting, when, if you take a pair of binoculars and look at the moon or in, any other uh, uh, planetary objects, we see them bitterly beaten up, pockmarked. It's clear that the solar system was a rough neighborhood. And so uh, the uniformism is, is a suspect premise even within a scientific uh, uh, context. Every major doctrine in the Bible has its roots in Genesis. Sovereign election, salvation, justification by faith, the believer's security, uh, the concept of separation, the disciplinary chastisement, the rapture of the church is even suggested here, divine incarnation, death and resurrection, the priesthoods, both the Aaronic and the Melchizedek uh, priesthoods. The Antichrist even has his roots in here, and the Palestinian covenant, and on it goes. There are more than we could even list here. Let's just jump in and take the first verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if you can embrace that sentence, you'll have no problems in the rest of the Bible. If you have problems with that sentence, uh, you'll have all kinds of difficulties. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It's interesting that in the Hebrew, it, there are uh, seven words and uh, 28 letters. And, uh, the, uh, uh, and by the way, you notice that Hebrew, remember, goes from right to left. All languages flow towards Jerusalem. Nations that were east of Jerusalem wrote from right to left. Nations that are west of Jerusalem write from left to right. And uh, so, uh, let's see, it's, uh, it, you know, Western Europe... We have Greek, Latin, uh, English, of course, and so on, Spanish, what have you, all go from left to right. If you go east of Jerusalem, whether it's Hebrew, Aramaic, Sanskrit, what have you, it goes from right to left. I don't know what you do with that piece of information, but I had to throw it out there. And uh, there are over 300,000 letters uh, in the Torah, but we're taking 28 of them here. And we actually could be spending a week of study uh, of, uh, on just this, uh, these letters. And uh, so notice the first word is Bereshit, in the beginning, or technically in beginning. And uh, then the word bara, in the beginning bara, God created out of nothing. There are three different words that could be used here. Asa, which means to make or fashion, fabricate if you will, but of something else. Uh, yatsa, which means to form something. But these are not the words used here. The word bara means to create out of nothing. And uh, all three of these words are in Isaiah 43, 7. They each have obviously a different sense. But the other thing I'd like to comment on without trying to uh, beat this to death um, is the word Elohim, the word God there. Bereshit bara Elohim. The word Elohim, you, whether you realize it or not, probably know enough Hebrew to realize that that's a plural noun. Certain categories of Hebrew nouns uh, suggest the plural by an I-M ending. Cherub is singular, cherubim is plural. Plural. A seraph is singular. Seraphim are plural. Uh, and Elohim is a plural noun. But what's strange about its usage in the Bible, it's always used as a singular noun. It technically is a grammatical mistake. And uh, it's a hint in the very structure of the first few words of the Torah of the Trinity. And we'll, the Trinity is all through the Old Testament, but that's a separate study. But just be sensitive to that. There are a number of basic questions. Is the universe 15 billion years old? That's the conventional wisdom among astronomers, of course, 15, 16 billion. And, uh, or was it created in six days, in 144 hours? How many of you here believe the universe is 16 billion years old? Okay, how many of you believe that the universe is, was created in literally six days? My hand is up in both cases. And that may surprise you. Because both may be true. It always bothers me when I find Christians who are sophisticated in Einstein's theory of relativity badger this because from Einstein's theory of relativity, you have to beg the question, whose clock are you talking about? And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. But there are many Christians that have trouble with the six-day concept. There's actually a large group of scientists that have published a book in six days, over 50 of them, exp expressing why they believe the universe was created in six days. Or was the light just created in transit? Were the aging factors built in, the tree rings that suggest more and so forth? Um, these things uh, are...